To do that will be uh, Laura Massaro getting a very decent ovation from uh, effectively a home crowd. Based up in uh, Preston now, Laura Massaro. First title was way back in 2004 when she announced herself by winning the German Open. And just about to join her on court for the uh, knock-up is the world number one who, I think, as Di said, needs very little introduction. And one of the great things about Nicole David is she's always smiling. Do you know, I was just looking at that and I just thought exactly the same thing. She is the chirpiest lady, um, you know, and so understated for how great she is and, and what a legend she is of the game and just such a nice person to be around. And she just seems to have a permanent smile on her face all the time, other than when she's focused on that squash court. Well, I wonder what these two ladies think about the battle ahead. We can uh, give you a clue to that now because we spoke to them a little earlier. Laura Massaro from England has 14 titles to her name. She had a massive win over world number one Nicole David in a pool match this week and is hoping to go one better than her semi-final appearance here 12 months ago. The atmosphere um, on the Z court last night was absolutely amazing. Um, unfortunately, it was two English girls in the in the semi-final, so I don't think the crowd felt they could fully get behind one of us. But um, it was an ama amazing atmosphere, and um, you know, from a really knowledgeable crowd, they knew they knew what was happening and when was the right time to clap and everything like that. So they just got really behind us both in terms of the atmosphere, and um, it was such a privilege to be able to play in front in, on the Z court in front of that crowd. And I think having the home crowd gives a lot of motivation. It's just um, knowing that they want you to play well and wanting you to perform and knowing that if um, they can get behind you, it really raises your level trying to kind of go with it. And I think you can just play off both. So the better that I play, the more the crowd can get behind me and vice versa. So um, it can play a big part, but I kind of need to make sure that I play well so that I can bring that into play. Well, for me to win the World Series finals would be absolutely amazing. Um, you know, I've had a great week so far and really enjoyed playing on the Z court and, and at the prestigious Queen's Club. So, you know, you put yourself in the final, that's all you can do at the beginning of the week and put yourself in contention to win the title. And then it's just about trying to perform on the day. It would be a, um, an amazing honour to win win the title and obviously playing Nicole in the final would 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 mean a lot as well but um, it's just a case of trying to take one one rally one game at a time and and come out the other side and hopefully it'd be a positive result. I'm playing Nicole David tonight and um, obviously she's uh, seven times world champion she's um, a great player going to go down as one of the greats of the game and um, she's really physically strong fit mentally quite tough um, I just have to go on there and try and play play the way that I want to play and um, try and take away those danger points if I can and, um, and see where we go from there. Malaysian Nicole David is universally acknowledged as the best player on the planet and is a seven-time World Open winner. She began playing at five years old and has racked up no fewer than 65 titles in a glittering career so far. Uh, on the Z court last night, it was really amazing with the crowd um, coming in and uh, it was a full house. You can just feel the atmosphere just stepping up another level every day and uh, I, I was just um, just taking every every rally in when after each shot you just play that shot and when it's a good good um, point they just the raw is just amazing and I, I just um, I just loved it. <laughs> In this finals, the World Series is um, pretty special to be in Queen's, Cl Queen's Club and uh, playing with a, a knowledgeable crowd and understanding the game of squash with the history and um, with squash in England. You just want to play your best squash and also um, I would just want to be putting everything together and, um, and starting the year strong. It will mean the world to, to win the World Series Finals. Um, having won last year, it was just a, a great feeling. And also to be contesting with the top eight players and then you come out um, as the winner is always always going to be a, a great boost for the year. And also the beginning of the 2013 is a new year. So everybody wants a, a good start of the year. Well, tonight I'll be playing Laura Massaro and um, definitely we've been playing a lot of finals um, obviously recently in, uh, in 
in the World Open uh, in Caymans and also in the pool matches and uh, she got the better of me in that day. But um, this is the finals of the World Series and I'm just going to go all out for this one. The fact that this final series is the best of five games rather than the best of three, is that going to favour one or other of the players or will they both be quite glad of it because it's kind of a bit more margin for error? Yeah, I think they'll both be um, glad that it's the best of five. It's what they're generally used to on the tour. They, they play best of five in most of the big events around the world. So it's what they're used to. And also, I do think, you know, when you lose or if you lose the first game of a five set match, you've got a li little bit further to be able to claw your way back. You know, best of three sets, you lose the first one and, you know, it's do or die for the second one. So I do think both of them will enjoy the fact that it is five sets today. Saw those uh, Nicole David stats on your screen. All began for her when she won the World Junior Open at 15 years of age. That was in 1999, and she hasn't looked back since. No, I mean, quite a remarkable player. I mean, she was the first woman actually to ever win the World Junior Open title twice um, in her younger days. And, as you, you know, she just, as you say, hasn't looked back since then. I mean, she is just a remarkable player. She... The thing that I'm so impressed with about uh, with Nicole is that she never ever stops trying to improve her game. She's always looking for her where her potential weaknesses are. She looks to really improve on those. And she actually said the other day that she's very aware of the players coming up behind her and that she needs to really focus on that. That's the thing. When you're number one, you're there to be shot at, aren't you? You know everyone wants a piece of you. Yeah, and also, you know, she she is aware that they are chasing her and she has had the odd loss and she knows that she's got to tweak her game all the time because she can't let them get used to the way she plays. She's got to have that little bit of advantage in her bag so that if she is put under pressure, she's still got something to pull out of it. There are Laura Massaro's stats, same age as Nicole David. Turned pro 13 years ago now. And as we mentioned earlier, this is a repeat of uh, the World Open just last month, which Nicole David won, but she's not unbeatable, that is for sure. I thought that he could beat Mike Tyson until Buster Douglas put him on the seat of his pants. How do you think Laura Massaro is going to play this? Will, will she play a similar kind of game to what we saw yesterday against Jenny Duncan? Um, I think she's probably... I wouldn't be surprised to see her just trying to find her groove in the first few points, trying to get into the rallies, stay with Nicole, you know, show her intent that she's not going to lose any point easily um, and focus on getting that ball to the back nice and deep, nice and wide. But I think if you're going to beat Nicole David, you've got to be brave. And I think she's got to do that. She's got to take command of the tee. She's got to push forward and she's got to look for those opportunities. Here we go then for the women's final. Nicole David in the orange serving. Down. Oh, and a, an early boast there from Laura. We've seen from her very recently that she just, she really likes that boast, you know, from both sides of the courts. But I do think in this instance, a little bit too early. She's got to find that length. She's got to get it wide and she's got to push Nicole to the back of the court to be able to open it up for herself to take those chances. And there, you know, she's still falling short with those drives and it's just opening the court up for Nicole straight away. If you are new to squash, the first is going to be the side wall first. Into the front wall. So the first couple of points to the world number one here. take long to settle does she Nicole David no she definitely walks onto the court I think she walks onto the court even for the knock-up ready to play you know I think sometimes some of the players maybe aren't quite quite ready to go the knock-up is what really gets them prepared and actually I think Nicole's ready to go for the minute she walks on there Boast again, a boast from Nicole. But a great cross court there, got onto it really quickly. And it all started with the first drop shot that David played about 20 strokes ago. 
which happened to start out of position. Yeah. She was chasing the point, and that was the last one. Three left. Yeah, it's interesting to see that boast. Four the court's left. looking a little less bouncy at the moment, so it's really taking that boast well, but uh, not much Masara can do about that at this stage, but she's really, again, there's no width on that ball for Masara. It's got to go wide, it's got to go deep. Like it. Yeah, super boast there, just above the tin. Even the world number one not quite able to get onto that one. Well, you heard the uh, volume of the applause there for the uh, English girl, and that will make her feel a lot better. First point of the final. Yeah, super play from Nicole. Interesting to see, though, Masaro really stepping back away from the ball almost at the moment, rather than actually looking to go forward and volley any opportunity that arises. She is sitting back a little bit. Her tee position is probably a foot or two too far back. She really needs to go forward a little bit more. And Nicole really chasing this ball down. Masaro trying to put it away. Another great boast, but Nicole's onto it. Beautiful lob back into the rally. Oh, yes, and well played there from Laura. I really felt then that Nicole was going to get into that, to that rally yeah. and uh, come out on top, but Masaro hung on in there. She almost had to win that point about three times because of the speed of David around the court. Fantastic defence, but in the end, to give best to Masaro. Trails too far. Yes, let two five. First let of the final. Down. Oh, that's unlucky. Definitely the right no. shot to play, 16. trying to play that volley to the back. Never easy, is it, that backhand volley when the ball's coming over your shoulder like that? Yeah, it's a tough shot to play. It's without question, the right thing to do. Stroke to David, 7-2. Awarded. Just explain what the thinking was behind that. From yeah, the I think, well, the ball was coming back towards her, so I think the referee felt that if Nicole was going to play that ball, she would have caught Massaro whilst doing so, which obviously means that it is a stroke ball, and I think she, to be honest, was quite close to that ball. Stroke is effectively a penalty point, which is why it's 7-2. Yeah. Um, Surprising error from David. Uh, mistake there from Please Nicole. Sir. Quite a simple shot there for her ordinarily to play, but hit the bottom of the tin. And out, 8-3. A little bit of a lucky bounce there. So Laura really needing to get herself back into this first game. Cross court there, better width allows her to play that drop shot and really needs to finish this off. But Nicole back onto it again, and a great tight ball from Nicole under pressure. And that's an example of what we were saying earlier about how the ball just sticks to that side wall. If you can get it that tight, and you just cannot peel it off the wall. Out. A little bit careless that from uh, Masaro too high ball. on the side wall, and that means seven game balls here for Nicole David for a one-game lead after, what, barely oh. five minutes. Here it is. Well, it could really have been too much more comprehensive than that. And Laura Masaro has to regroup 
and improved dramatically. Just seven minutes at talk. David takes the first game by 11 points to three. Well, David will be delighted with that. Massaro obviously less show. I just wonder if there's a few nerves creeping in. Mean, you would have thought they would be. She's played in big finals before, but she didn't look like she'd settled at any stage of that game. No, she didn't. I think actually she looked a little bit sluggish, to be honest. She didn't look as bouncy as she was yesterday. And maybe, you know, there are a little bit of nerves there today. You know, it is the final. It's a big match. She's on home turf, um, quite possibly. But, you know, I think Nicole's looking good. She's looking a lot sharper than she was in the pool games. And uh, Masaro's got to come up with something special here. She wants to get back in the match. Well, we said that she's always smiling, Nicole David, but don't let that fool you. She has a, a steely determination. You can't be number one for six years unless you have that complete determination and drive. And uh, she has it in abundance. And this has become a very difficult uh, game now for uh, Masaro. It was difficult at the start, but now she's a game down. And they have to win three of the next four. Well, I think this will be one of those instances where she will be glad it's best of five. Um, Nicole's come out as, you know, an absolute absolute storm there. And uh, Masaro is going to have to listen carefully to what she's being told there in her corner, what her coach is telling her, what she needs to do to get herself back into this match. Um, certainly from my perspective, if I was there talking to her, it would be to get that ball a lot deeper, get Nicole into the back, find that width pin her into the back and then look for those attacking opportunities and to try and step up that court a little bit more she's hanging back just that bit too far she needs to push on push up and really get in there and attack Interesting what uh, Nicole David was saying after she lost to Masaro in that pool game on Thursday. She was saying this yesterday that she's just got better as the tournament has gone on, David that is. So maybe the, the Nicole David we're seeing now a little bit more focused than the one we saw on Thursday. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I think she probably came into this tournament, you know, not necessarily jaded, but, you know, she's come off the back of winning the seventh World Open title in her career. You know, she's had Christmas and New Year in between. Hopefully she had the chance to enjoy it. And, you know, she's going to... What do you buy a girl who's got 65 titles? Do you know, that's a very good question. Maybe that's a question she, somebody should ask her that after the match. She doesn't need a racket. They're queuing up to supply her with those. Absolutely. And there's a great shot there, deep in the back forehand corner. One love. This is a, a bit better here now from Masaro. She's finding a little bit more of a depth here. Just about stayed it on the sidewall from Masaro after the boast from David. Absolutely. Just popped her hand up there, David, to say she thought it might have gone out of court. But she may well query that if she loses this point. Rob, thank you. <laughs> Decision on the ball on the sidewall. That was good. Yeah, there we go. So actually querying that out, out of court uh, decision, but given as good. Oh, beautiful inch perfect backhand drop shot there. And out. Played from pretty Two deep one. in the court, as you can see. Not easy to do with that level of accuracy. Angle. Great boast there from Nicole, but you know, again, just Three too one. soon, I think, from Masaro. You know, she's still not getting her back deep enough to be able to play that kind of shot in. You know, Nicole is so quick around the court. She's got to be as deep as you can get her before you play that shot. Oh, 
was a great shot. She really is actually doing what Masaro needs to do to her, and that's pinning her in the back corner and then just taking the chance there to play that short ball into the front. We've only had, what, quarter of an hour or so of this match, but already warning signs flashing red for Laura Massaro. One four down here, having dropped the first game, and oh. that's a superb wrong-footed shot again from David. Absolutely wonderful play. I mean, she really Nine is one. looking on her game here today. She's not give, giving anything up lightly and that was just a beautiful shot nice and low and just away from Laura Massaro Laura's gonna have to really get stuck in here now she can't afford to let Nicole get any further away from her now she's gonna have to fight show what she's made of and Massaro was doing what uh, to let for that no let no let 6-1. I'm looking a little bit frustrated there at the moment, Laura. Looking up to the sky, wondering what she needs to do here to get herself back into this game. Just to explain, see, for those that don't uh, follow squash that closely, no let was given there. What is the referee taking into consideration? The fact as to whether... Masada would have got to that. Is that the main criteria? Yeah, ultimately, you know, are you close enough to, to the ball to be able to have got it without interference or anything else um, that happens? So, you know, if they don't feel she's close enough to get that ball, then it's a no let given. Yeah, super boast there. Whipping that forehand in, nice and low above the tin. Hand out, 2-6. It's had the odd moment of inspiration, but still in trouble in this uh, game at 2-6. If you could just get a run of points together successively, that might put a bit of pressure onto David. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, as we well know with pointer rally scoring, it can take a matter of seconds and you yes, can be, t you know, two, three points two, nearer. Well, this one will be a let. A much better rally here by Laura, putting the pressure on a bit now. It's a great get by David, though, wasn't it? Absolutely, gets herself back into that rally. But Laura's got to persevere. She's got to keep pushing her, but just not able to get onto that drive from Nicole. And you do wonder what you've got yeah. to do to actually get on top of Nicole and 17. and really demand, you know, take control of those rallies. But she just comes back. I just think with so many players, that rally would have already been over before David would have had the chance to win it. Yeah, completely. Stroke to David. Video review, please. Well, a stroke given to David, and uh, that's a review from Masaro. She doesn't like the decision, so just go through. So what, what is the adjudicator looking at here on this video review? Um, Again, very similar to the to the let decision earlier. It's whether or not there's interference, and in this case, whether or not the interference is so great that it stops you being able to play the ball at all, and therefore play a winning stroke. And as you can see there, Laura is in Nicole's swing. Whether or not she's close enough to the ball to warrant a stroke, we shall find out. Just to clear up, no one's saying that Masala is intentionally getting in her way. Oh no no no! Where she is on the court is preventing. Decision David upheld. from playing the ball and Stroke the uh, decision not held. Yeah, no, absolutely. Box. Miss Masaro has no reviews remaining. 
Yeah, not at all intentional. You know, sometimes when you get caught in those front corners on both sides of the court, you know, if it's a tight ball and you're trying to get out the way and the player's trying to get in, it's very, very difficult. Just one video review available for each player in each game. So Masaro will be able to review again unless this game goes to 10 all at the moment. You'd say that's highly unlikely, especially now. 9-2. Yes, Nicole definitely looks like she's on a mission today. She's not looking very forgiving at all. Wanting to add another title to the endless amount she has already. And this is not a journeyman pro that she's um, thrashing at the moment. This is the world number three. A completely. And, you know, someone that's actually beaten her before. So... Uh, you get the feeling she's out there to uh, prove to herself and the rest of us that maybe that pool match wasn't how it should have been and this is maybe how it should be. I mentioned that she beat her on Thursday, David, uh, Massaro. You say that revenge is a dish best served colder at the moment. Massaro being completely frozen out yeah, by David, Nicole David, David, who completes an 11-2 demolition in that second game to take a two-love lead, and she's done it in double quick time. Just 15 minutes for those first two games, and Massaro at the point of no return. If anything, that was more impressive from David than the first game, and that was pretty good. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, you know... I must admit, I did think Massaro was going to come out for that game and really kind of take the game to her a bit more. But she almost looks, I don't know, almost a little bit frightened to get in there. It's quite extraordinary. But, you know, credit where credit's due. Nicole is absolutely on fire, I have to say. She's not missing very much. Um, she's, I mean, she hit that one forehand into the bottom of the tin. But other than that, she's really not doing anything wrong. And I actually think Laura is on there not knowing what on earth to do. Yeah, there is a, a slight air of dejection, isn't there, about Laura Massaro? I'm not suggesting that she's not trying her hardest, but it's just, so far, nothing's worked at all for her. No, without question, that's the case. I'm hoping that, you know, she is going to walk back on court now and she is going to get stuck in. You know, she's got nothing to lose. At the end of the day, she is the underdog. You know, she hasn't got anything to lose. You know, no disrespect to Laura, but, you know, nobody expects her to win this match. So, actually, she's got a great chance to do that. You know, she's home turf. People are going to get behind her. So, I'm really hoping that she can get stuck in. But, you know, take a look at Nicole David. I mean, what an amazing athlete. You know, she is just an incredible player. But, you know, we've got to get, you know, everyone's got to get behind her. The crowd's got to get behind Laura and really support her, and let's see whether she can get herself back into this match. Squash genius back on court. Laura Massaro with plenty of work to do, and that's the understatement of the season. Yeah, she's uh, she's got a seriously big job ahead of her now. Just watching Nicole there in between games, you know, the focus on her face. She's sat there staring into space almost, you know, just refocusing, thinking about what she's about to do again on court. And, you know, I'm sure she's going to come out firing all cylinders, as she has done with the first two games. But... Laura's got to get in there. This game's not over yet. It's not over until the last point's gone. And uh, let's hope she can fight her way back into this match. It's a uh, big movement at the moment to get squash into the uh, 2020 David Olympic Games. games we, we should know the outcome of that later this year. And Nicole Double. David, in fact, carried the Olympic torch from Malaysia in a build-up to the uh, Athens Games back in 2004. And she has said on several occasions she swapped all seven of her world titles for one Olympic gold. That's how badly she and everyone else associated with 
family of squashes that were wanted included in the Olympics for 2020. We don't yet know, of course, where those Olympics will be. Well. Japan is one of the favourites, but uh, Turkey also. And that's uh, uh, some heartwarming applause as uh, Masaro wins the first point of the third game. Stroke to David. And that one all. Another stroke to David, and this time no video review from Masaru. No, I think at this early stage in the game, quite often the players try not to use their review too early on because if it does come to the stage where it gets quite critical in the game, they want to try and save that review for a time when it really does matter. And again, no width there from Masaru. Nicole straight onto that volley into the front forehand corner. And there we can see that it's just, it's just not wide enough. You know, Nicole can really get her racket onto there comfortably. It's got to be wider than that. That's great anticipation from... Uh, David to put her in charge of this rally. Great get there from Massaro. Oh, and a cross court drop shot there, actually into the middle of the tin from Nicole. And out. Hit the nick, Two but uh, just a little bit too low. Now, could she win a couple of points here? Just put her in front and give her a little bit of confidence. She definitely just needs that momentum, as you say, one or two points, you know, in a row on the bounce. Really can give you that little bit of boost you need to keep really pushing on and hopefully getting Laura to the stage where she feels she can win this game. loose volley there yes lad it's unfortunate she played a beautiful sure. backhand drop shot there opened the court up for herself could have done better down oh, oh that's the second time absolutely Oh, again, on that backhand side as well, going across the court. Just hasn't got a feel there on that side at the moment. But all in uh, favour for Ma Laura Massaro there. A little bit of extra help. Doesn't go amiss when you're trying to catch up. <laughs> yes, let. <laughs> That'll be a let. Three, two. Yes, let. Three, two. Great rally here from both girls. Really solid. And Nicole trying to push forward, but a great backhand drop shot there from Massaro. Not able to put that one away though. Going for the kill. Patience here from Mazzaro, and she puts a boast in on the backhand side. Playing that drop shot from Nicole David. Out. Oh, and unfortunate there from Mazzaro. Just clipped it up too high, went out on the side of the court, but Hand out. a lot Heel. more solid there from Mazzaro. 
Well, she certainly made David work a lot harder to win the point. It's a point again to it, though. We're tied up at three all here in the third game. There's that beautiful boast. That's her shot, isn't it? That's her shot. It's definitely her trademark shot. And on this and court, if you can four, just get it right, you know, you have to drill it into that side wall and it just flies around the front of the court. And if it's nice and low, it's so tough to get back. Nice lob there from Laura. Plenty of height on that. Give her time to get back into the middle of the court. Oh. Pick up. Pick up was good. <coughs> Three of us saw the pick up good. And out for all. Time that Masara inches ahead. David claws it back. Never more than a point between them in this game so far. That's a great backhand drop there from the back from Laura and a super straight drive and a real clench of the fist and a shout there from Laura. Oh, come on. She knows she can do this. She's just got to get stuck in. And out. But tactically, that's about the best point she's played in the match, and it should give her a huge injection of confidence. Serving out 5-4. Yeah, it's good to see that come on from Laura. It's quite a, a well-known trait for Laura that she doesn't go through too many matches without that coming on when she says it to herself. It's like a real come on, and people know that she's really getting herself back into the match. And as you heard from the cheer there from the crowd, they're getting behind her. So she can just keep this momentum going. She really has got a great chance of pulling herself back into this match. Down. And a backhand drop shot down there from Nicole. So a two-point lead here for Six Laura. Four. Chances. Suddenly, there's a bit of a gap developing here. Yeah, Laura's looking uh, decidedly more positive here. She's uh, really uh, hitting through the ball a bit better. She's rallying out a lot better with Nicole. Well, thank you. Just not able to get onto that boast there. But, um, and out, 5-7. Still two points ahead. Still everything to play for here. to David. Just what Masano didn't Six, need. Seven. Yeah, unfortunate there. Again, a tight ball there. And uh, just trying to flick it back down the wall and it just popped out and really not a lot you can do about that. And there's that boast again from Laura. Just needs to be careful not to play it too much. Yes, led. Six, seven. She's played so well up to now in this game. Really playing some good solid squash, not going in too soon, waiting for the right opportunity. Step 
backing up the court a little bit more now. Just taking that cross court on the volley. Oh, and another top of the tin there from Nicole Davids. And uh, this is starting to look very much more positive for Massaro. Yeah, that was a big bonus, wasn't it? Seven all, had it gone seven all after being seven four ahead. You'd have started to become concerned, but eight six. Sorrow. Down. Oh, and just a little too though there. The right shot to play and the width was there and the depth is Seven so minutes. much better. And the ideal opportunity there, but a little bit of tension, I think, possibly just uh, making a catch the top of the tin. And again, you know that we were talking earlier about how the ball can jut out on this court, and that was a classic example Eagle. there. Laura's drop shot just popping out into the middle, and it just puts you under a bit more pressure, and Nicole able to pop it back into the front corner, and Laura unable to get that one back. Down. Not the time to Nine produce eight. that because now Nicole David within two points of the title. Yeah, a little bit of desperation there, I think, from Laura. She really doesn't need to do that, you know. She's still only one point away from Nicole and she really, if she can just stay focused on the fact she can be solid, play solid, wait for the right opportunity. She doesn't need to force it. If she plays that ball deep, she will get her opportunity. from Massaro. Good patient play here. Oh, and a lovely little boast there from Nicole. Fantastic hands, and it gives the world number one from Malaysia two championship points. 10-8, match ball. That's one of them clawed back. That was really gutsy from Massaro. And out, match point down to play that. Yeah, and again, you know, a little bit lucky possibly. It just jutted out and actually went away from Nicole. She wasn't quite able to get on it. But hey, you know, a point's a point. And at this stage, it doesn't matter how you win them as long as you win them. Backhand volley drop there from Mazzaro. Yes, let. Been a brave man to give a no let Nine there at championship point. I think everybody was holding their breath there for a second. there and a lovely cross court but Nicole onto it and she's managed to get that back kept herself in the rally can she put this rally away and get back level in this game 
and really trying to pile on the pressure Masara, but just not able to get onto that ball. Well, that pretty much sums up everything about Nicole Davy because Masara did everything she could to win the point against most players she would have done, but not this girl. And Nicole David is the champion here at Queen's. After a fabulous performance, she wins in three straight games. At least Massaro made a fight for it in that third game. But it was absolutely superb. 11-3, 11-2, 11-9 the final score in just over half an hour. You, you can't help but marvel at Nicole David. Nicole, congratulations. You are the winner of the World Series Squash Finals. You are five foot four, but you are ruthless and relentless. That was a fantastic performance. What does it mean to you to win this title? Oh, it, it really means a, a lot, starting off with a, a good win in, a, in 2013 and just um, also coming back after losing to Laura in the pool. You just have to just reassess and try and make sure you just stay on top of things and not let it go. Uh, so I'm just really pleased to, to win it, Trilo. It wasn't, didn't feel like it was a three, three love match, but uh, because it was such a good match. You guys have had some great tussles recently uh, in the World Open final at the beginning of December. You beat her in the final, she beat you in the pool stage. It's back and forth, back and forth. You came out of the blocks very quickly. Was that the, was that the game plan today? Yeah, um, I think it's just just knowing that she's in her home home crowd. That I just knew I had to do something to start off strong and uh, get uh, get the lead. And if she if she just get that uh, little lead, she would just be feeding off the the crowd. Uh, instead, I was feeding off the crowd today. <laughs> it was I think you've all enjoyed it, haven't you? Watching uh, Laura and Nicole, it's been a, a fantastic performance from both of you. And I know you um, you have a big team around you. Is your coach here, your trainer, your psychologist, are they all here? Well, they, they're all um, taking time off. No, <laughs> no. I mean, it, it was a big um, World Open uh, two weeks ago, and this time I just had my physio with me, and um, we just have to focus on the, the, some tournaments that I have to just um, make sure that they are there, the, my psychologist and my um, coach and physio. So all the, the team makes a big difference, and um, they're all supporting me through text messages and, and, and Skype, so that's all good. You are a brilliant athlete. What would it mean to you to compete in the 2020 Olympic Games if squash gets through? Well, it would mean everything to me. Um, that's just the ultimate goal for both me and for squash. And it's a dream um, come true if, if it gets in in the 2020. And hopefully, who knows, if my body can still last. And I don't have to bring my walking stick out, then I can hopefully play, play in that one. Who knows? You guys deserve it. Congratulations to Nicole David, our winner. Thank you. Well, fantastic performance from Nicole David, and she's such a modest girl as well. There's no hint of, uh, of an ego there at all, so is there? No, there isn't. I mean, she is just, you know, an amazing professional. She is just so unassuming, and the fact that she is a seven times World Open champion, if you were to meet her for the very first time, you would have no idea how good and how amazing and what a great athlete she really is. Yeah, at least uh, Laura Massaro made a real fight of it in that third game. At one stage, she threatened to win it, but that's what the, the top sports people do in any sport. They come through like Nicole David did when it's a, you know, it's almost a war of attrition sometimes, but she's just stronger. She is, and I think, you know, athletes and, and people around sport, you know, they talk about creating that fear from the minute you walk on to court or you, you walk out there to do a race, you know, it's that that's kind of thing of thinking, oh my God, this is who they are. You know, it, it starts the fear off the minute you walk on the court.